Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where an entitled mother almost lets her young daughters get trampled to death by giant horses. Our next Reddit post is from Clap That Trap. So I just got home from the gun range, and my experience today was something that I just had to share. So here's what happened. I arrived at the gun range after receiving a new assault rifle, and I also decided to bring my handgun to brush up on my holster draw skills. Everything was going normally. I brought a good amount of ammo, signed some paper, put my ear pro on, and headed outside to the shooting area. I was pleasantly surprised to see a mother and her young child, maybe six years old, also on the gun range. He had a little rifle and I thought, good to teach them while they're young. After I sat down and loaded my magazine, I started to fire at some of the closer targets to make sure my sights were correct. After a little bit of fiddling with that, I felt a tap on my shoulder. I turned around and, of course, it's the entitled parent with the most fake smile that I've ever seen. Excuse me, can you fire something that's not so big and loud? It's scaring my son. I looked over to her son and he looked fine, but I simply smiled and said, I'm sorry, but it's a gun range. You'll just have to deal with it. She gave me the look of, did you really just talk back to me? And walked away huffing. I thought that was the end of that. Nope. I couldn't even get through another full magazine before the entitled parent came up and grabbed my rifle, attempting to wrench it away from me, which caused a negligent discharge. When the rifle fired, she let go and screamed, slapping me pretty hard. What are you doing? Are you trying to shoot me, you effing psycho? What are you doing, lady, coming up and grabbing my gun like that? She continued screaming obscenities at me before one of the workers quickly came out asking what was going on. This idiot just tried to shoot me and my child after I told him his stupid gun was too loud. Who needs something that big anyway? You grabbed my rifle while I was shooting, you moron! The worker tried to calm the both of us down and I proceeded to walk back to my rifle, unloaded it and kept my distance. The worker told the entitled parent that he would check the security footage and if that was indeed the case, he would immediately call the police. Before he went to check the footage, he and his manager came over to get my side of the story and to watch me in case I did try something. A few minutes pass and the worker comes back out, telling the woman that her and her child need to leave immediately. She threw an absolute fit, saying, People don't need big guns like that, and it was scaring my child. She ended up grabbing her child and literally dragging him behind her as she stormed to her car and drove off. Down in the comments, I love this reply from Undead Savior. What the F did she expect at a gun range? A plate of waffles? Of course it's gonna be loud. Also, it takes a special kind of double-digit IQ absolute moron to grab a rifle while someone is shooting it. I distinctly remember one time when I was like, um, I, had, I was really young. I had to be about eight or nine years old and my dad was doing yard work outside with a chainsaw. He was like cutting down a tree or something. And my mom told me to go get my dad and bring him in for dinner. My dad was wearing ear protection. So between the ear protection and the really loud chainsaw, he couldn't hear me yelling at him. Plus, he was sort of like facing this corner of bushes, so there was no way that I could get into his field of vision. I screamed as loud as my 8-year-old lungs could possibly scream trying to get him to hear me, but he just couldn't hear me. But still, even in that scenario, my 8-year-old brain was like, hmm, you know what, maybe I shouldn't come up to my dad who's using an active chainsaw because I might scare him and he might turn around really quickly and chop my head off. <laughs> so instead of coming up to my dad and touching him, I went and found a stick and threw it at his back. You know, not hard, but enough to get his attention. It's like, come on, lady. <laughs> Even an eight-year-old kid has more sense than you do. Our next Reddit post is from Shifting Parallax. I live in a rural neighborhood. Everyone's got about three to eight acres, so we're all pretty spaced out. I live on five acres, and my nearest neighbors are a sweet elderly couple that's about one acre from me. They're perfect. The husband does yard work as a hobby and his wife bakes. We have a nice agreement where if I need something big cut down, he takes the wood down and uses it for his fireplace. And in exchange, I trade recipes and bake with his wife. Honestly, they just like the company. I own my own home, have two horses, a cat, and recently my mom also moved in because she was in financial trouble. I'm happy to help because she's good company and I'd do anything for her. And then everything changed when COVID happened. So here's where things go south. My neighbor's son and his family, a wife and two girls aged four to seven, live in the nearest city and they didn't feel safe. 
I don't blame them, and because my elderly neighbors are saints, they opened their home to them and the brood moved right in. Up until this point, I was the youngest person in the neighborhood at 29 years old, so having kids wander around is new for everyone. At first it was no big issue. They stayed inside, got settled, maybe they were good kids. Total long shot, I know, but hey, a girl can hope. So one morning I'm letting my horses, a Clydesdale and a Welsh pony, out into the front pasture, and I hear the most high-pitched squealing from next door. It was so shrill my Clydesdale second guessed going outside, but cautiously proceeded only to be met with more squeals. I pop my head out, and the two young girls are literally losing their minds. And I get it. It's a little white pony and the horse from Brave, but still, they're large animals, so they should have the good sense not to approach, right? <laughs> not a snowball's chance in hell. These kids sprint to my fence, shrieking. The pony runs around in a panic, and the Clydesdale stands there with the same WTF look that I've got on my face. Then, the four-year-old starts to go under my fence. Oh, hell no. I said firmly, don't you dare climb under that fence. And admittedly, I was kind of harsh, but I'm not about to let my horses trample a kid. I walk over to them, and they look like they're about to cry. But I explain firmly that they're big animals and can hurt them easily and to never go over or under the fence. They go home and I clean the stalls. An hour later, I hear someone banging on my house's front door, and I can see through my barn's hatch door that my mom and the mom of the kids are having a conversation. The kid's mom then storms down to the barn. I've never met this lady, but I know an entitled parent when I see one. Joy of joys. She starts going off on me about, How dare you make my kids cry! They just wanted to see the ponies, blah blah blah. But when she takes a breath, I get my point across. Ma'am, your youngest was crawling under the fence towards two large animals that none of you know. That Clydesdale is a 2,000 pound draft horse. He can literally crush you, not feel it, and do permanent damage. The pony looks cute, but he needs an experienced hand because he's very untrustworthy, flighty, and has a tendency to bite. Your children are not allowed near them without my consent and heavy supervision. And they are never allowed to be loose in the pasture with my horses. Do you understand? She then starts ranting about, well, if they're so dangerous, then why do you have them? Are you even allowed to have them? I should call animal control. So first off, one, they're my personal horses. Yes, I'm allowed to have them. Two, your kids trespass on my property. I'm trying to keep them safe. Three, this is not a petting zoo. She huffs off and I continue to work. Later that evening when my husband gets home, I explain what happens. He's understandably alarmed, and I explained how dangerous that situation is. He agrees. It's not that my horses are aggressive, mind you, but it's inherently dangerous in general. You've got a 50 to 200 pound human versus an 800 to 2,000 pound horse. If you don't know what you're doing, you can be seriously injured. It's pure physics. So I'm optimistic with his reaction, but I know he's often not home, so I stay cautious. Later the next week, I'm working from home and I suddenly hear screaming. Not excited screaming, but scared little kids screaming. I rush outside and the four-year-old is bawling in the middle of the pasture with the pony doing laps around the perimeter of the fence as my Clydesdale slowly approaches the little girl. The seven-year-old is crying outside the fence and calling for her mom, but clearly their mom is not watching them. My initial terror recedes a bit, because my Clydesdale is essentially a golden retriever in a horse's body. He's the sweetest pushover in the world. He's gingerly approaching her in a slow, friendly way and being as non-threatening as he can. And with my Clydesdale so close to the girl, the pony won't rush at the girl. The Clydesdale is probably about three steps from the girl, but I yell for him to halt, and like a good boy he does. I make my way in with him and start asking the girl questions. Are you hurt? She isn't, but she's clearly scared, so I pick her up and walk out, making my Clydesdale heal to me just in case the pony gets a dumb idea. The mom is still nowhere in sight, so I take them to my neighbors. What proceeded was about 30 minutes of screaming and crying. The girl's mother was the one to open the door, and she starts screaming at me and firing off questions before my neighbors intervene. I tell everyone exactly what happened, and my elderly neighbors blew up at this mom, not at me. They screamed at her for being so irresponsible and negligent, how they could have been hurt. 
The mom tried to throw blame on me, but they were having none of that. My neighbors apologized profusely, and I went about my day until the Karen's husband came home. He came by and apologized too, for his family's behavior and especially the behavior of his wife. I accepted it and said that I understood. They're little girls. I too know the allure of magnificent fluffy horses. The mom was at fault for not watching the kids. I'm just glad everyone was okay. The girls were really shook up, so I extended an olive branch because, well, I was an overexcited kid who liked horses once too. It's just, I had a horse mom who knew what she was doing. And I didn't want this to completely traumatize them from being around horses. So the next day, I properly introduced him to my Clydesdale, with him in his stall with the inside hatch open and the girls being supervised by their father and me. We were all safe in the barn. They loved it. The Clydesdale loved the attention, and everyone's happy, right? Well, except the mom, who took my olive branches and offered to teach them horseback riding, give them free lessons, and other things. But her husband shot that down hard, and presumably my elderly neighbors did also. Since then, it's been quiet. I did, however, install a second electrical wire on the bottom of my fence, not just on the top, just in case. And yes, the kids did test it. The seven-year-old got zapped pretty good and got in trouble with her dad. Other than that, there have been no incidents other than the kids wanting to pet them when I drop evening feed in every once in a while. Here's hoping it stays peaceful. But seriously, do not go up to animals that you don't know. Man, no kidding, OP. When I was younger, I used to work at a place that had Clydesdales. <laughs> and let me tell you, if you haven't been around a Clydesdale, those things are basically like living cars. They're huge. They're, like, when you imagine a horse, you think of, you know, a pretty big animal. But Clydesdales are a full step up from those. They feel more like rhinoceroses than horses. Our next Reddit post is from Mommy Finger Cocomelo. Two years ago, I, a 21-year-old woman, left my son's father, a 22-year-old man who was an openly abusive douchebag. But that's a story for another day. At the pre-court mediation, his mother, who witnessed the abuse firsthand, got in my face asking why I was leaving her son. Her reasoning was, it was only one time. Even though it wasn't only one time. I met this woman's son when I was 14, and admittedly we had weed smoking issues which his parents supported at the time. Actually, we sold weed for them to get our fix. Then I fell pregnant at the age of 18 and I quit smoking for my baby. This woman was a terrible grandmother who smoked cigarettes and weed inside the house just like the grandfather. They eventually tried to bully me into handing over full custody or else they wanted nothing to do with the baby. Luckily, I had my own family support that day and they had to back down. Fast forward to now, and we've been in court for what feels like forever. My kid's dad has failed multiple hair follicle tests, tests that date back three months, while I've passed them all. He only visits when either my mom or I say he can, and he still lives with his entitled parents, which isn't a safe environment for our son to be in. I haven't seen them since last November for my baby's third birthday, during which his dad got drunk and made a rapey comment about my older sister's clothing. Yeah, they're the type of people who get drunk at children's birthday parties. My son and I are doing much better now. Last year I was accepted into university and my son attends daycare while my mom assumes a fatherly role for him. But, of course, my mom and I can't replace his need for a father figure. He clings to my uncles and brothers instead. No matter who calls you bitter or mean, don't give in and don't give up. Remember, you're doing it for your child's future. Get better and give your kids a life worth living for. Over the years, I've heard a lot of lame excuses from parents about why they don't want to be in their kid's life. The excuse of, but I don't want to stop smoking weed, is one of the worst excuses I've ever heard. Down in the comments, White Wolf Dreamer says exactly what I was thinking. What the F was even her end goal here? Give us full custody or we'll keep our abusive pot-smoking selves away from you forever. I'd be like, you promise? Our next Reddit post is from XCD Weisses. I work at a kid's jump place, so it's pretty obvious that I've run into a few Karens or entitled parents here or there. But today's experience was one that I felt deserved to be shared. Some of our trampolines are kids only, specifically the bigger trampolines since a parent could accidentally hit a younger kid. This is a constant issue at my workplace. I have to tell so many parents that adults aren't allowed on the jump. Most of the time they understand and don't go again. Sometimes they're inquisitive or annoyed. But I've never been insulted or thrown any flag. They just think it's a dumb rule. 
As I was walking up to one mother, I instantly knew that she was pretty hostile. You're gonna come tell me to get down, aren't you? I'm sorry, miss, but adults can't go on this jump. Really? You're an effing Nazi, man! I was so taken aback by this, since I normally only hear this type of talk online. The thing is, I'm actually Jewish, and my great-grandparents were alive and survived the Holocaust. But I decided to hold my tongue since she's obviously a toxic individual. Then she tried to guilt trip me. She said to her kid, Come on, son. I'm not the one making you cry. That guy is. The kid wasn't even crying. He was silent as a mouse. This would have been the end of it if she wasn't so immature. Thankfully, she didn't try to get on the trampoline again, but she decided to act like a baby. Throughout the day, every time I walked by her, she made comments like, Look out for him, kids. He's a commie. Sorry we can't have fun anymore, kids. He's to blame. I decided to ignore her, but it really pisses me off to think that she's teaching her kids to be a baby when things don't go her way and to treat employees like they aren't humans. This grown mother is acting more childish than the actual kids. That was our slash entitled parents, and if you like this content, check out my Patreon where I publish extra episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.